efficient engineering. When it comes to efficient engineering, we're looking at e-plan, we have different ways of looking at it. Of course, when we start, we create a project, we can use different tools. Here, the e-plan co-engineer, we have different solutions. When it comes to panel building itself, the assembly of the panel itself, again, we can help. We've seen a little bit before that when we go through the fabrication of a panel, we have different phases. Kitting, the mechanical insulation, enclosure modification. In the ideal world, we don't have any. But of course, in this world, we do have to do some modifications. Uh, we have to assemble uh, the terminal strips, we have to install the devices, we have to go through some labeling, the wire fabrication and wiring, and of course, finally, the testing and the logistics is a loop that endlessly starts over again and then again. Now, when you come to the point that you have done your design, you often submit the design to some of your uh, co-workers or engineers or customers and you technically here go about and create what we call a PDF file and a closed project, which means you are releasing it. Uh, in the modern world, we do not print anymore. We actually generate a PDF. This PDF can now be submitted to your end customer, to, as I said, your colleagues that don't have ePlan to view the project that you have just created here. If they require a change, they will most likely submit that change through the PDF because when you look at a project like this, this is basically a project that was saved under D Data Projects. Rockwell Automation on the Move, R-O-T-M here, and my project is my EC1 Cogineer. In my document, I can find my specific PDF file. So, of course, this is my PDF file. As you can see, it's a very smart PDF. I do have all my different objects, and I may find some errors. Well, in this case, this is what I want to change. Please exchange part for SE part because this was eventually one of my requests. Uh, exchange, of course, X change C A. There we go. And I will post this replied here. This is one comment that I just added here in my PDF. I will close this. I will save it. Of course, I can save it in the same folder. Why not? Exactly here in the same spot. There we go. We replace it. And I'm going back to ePlan now, and I will import this comment. Now, before I do the import, I will actually open my project for revision, because I need to generate the revision, which is uh, rev1 feedback from my customer. There we go. So, here, my project is now open again. I can now import this specific PDF that I just have created earlier, which is in data. I'll just find it here under my projects. Rockwell Engineering doc. There we go. One comment will be imported. We'll recognize this one comment. Now, I don't have to look for it. I can open the comment navigator, which will directly show me a go-to graphic feature which shows right away oops we're in draft mode we have to change it so the idea was to exchange this part number for an se internal language this is a schneider part so i'm going to do a change i'm going to just basically create here a recycle bin so technically speaking i'm relocating this in my recycle bin so this means basically this guy i will basically put it up there and this one here I will modify it which means I will remove that part right um, remove it there we go remove the part here uh, I will go to the data portal and I will look for another part this time not from this manufacturer from another manufacturer and I'm going to check in here for something that could actually work. Uh, it's a 2.5. This one is good. I'm going to pick this guy here and it will simply import all the data directly from the data portal. So all the commercial data, the uh, step file that uh, was converted into a 3D macro for ePlan, everything is here. And I'm going to put here in the procurement error one 
takes changed part just as a comment here just to have it you know uh, marked up and this of course this page um, I will close the page because this is a comment uh, in the revision that I want to see down at the bottom so I exchanged my AB part for SE this is an Alan Bradley part for Schneider so let's not make any preferences here let's just call it up like this and what happens is that you can see here down at the bottom you can see a comment that was just registered automatically here exchange a part perfect now even better than this I can generate here my general uh, reports and we will add a revision uh, table to revision table actually one that will show me what exactly I did on this particular page here that's the first thing and another one for the parts because obviously I have now a part that is to be recycled and another part that has to be purchased so here I have a parts list that tells me okay which one has been removed which one is exchanged these are the two parts one from Schneider the other one from Rockwell and in my revision table here I can see okay I have on page 01 this here this is where I changed the part but this is not exactly all I also have to go and consider the 3d aspect of it so if I actually open the layout navigator you will see that in our enclosure and if I dig a little bit deeper into the parts ePlan would actually mention on the part number I'm looking for I'm actually looking here at the uh, mounting location A1 here there's one component that is missing the Schneider part here automatically is missing in this here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the mounting panel and if I zoom in I have an issue with this component here if I do take off my filter here and I do a synchronize you will see something interesting ePlan will call this as an error technically this device is the one I would have to remove because it's no longer the good component and I would be placing this component here which is the new Schneider component this is the one I'm gonna place there right on here right and of course this device is also when I look at this from front view or side view best things probably go to the front and I would actually pick this part and reroute it because my routing is also a little bit different right for this particular device so once this project is so far done so I did my change here I'm pretty much complete and I can republish this project and the interesting thing about the publishing about this project and uh, wait I'm gonna publish by specifying that this is my revision number one just on purpose I'm gonna call it 1.1 here okay so check it out here and the idea behind this scene is of course I want to see how my electrician does with this modification because what got changed obviously is the length the wire uh, target the parts it's not that obvious to see exactly these changes uh, and I want to see how he has done because obviously in the real world I would have waited um, that I'm finished but here I did not wait as you saw earlier I actually went and started my wiring with smart wiring of course and before handing it out I actually generated this project and this project my electrician already started placing these wires so let's see if I actually take a look at this project here and I update the project by picking the 1.1 let's see what happens here Ooh, interesting I have now a new filter that is in here and it says you have installed wires that have not been moved you have removed wires and you have some wires the two uninstall this is actually a wire that affects my specific one and I have to remove it this means the wire that was there is no longer um, there so I have to remove it so let's remove it fine it's now done now I can go and check out my new status here 
and just filter out and start again with all the, the ones I can reposition and I can do the wiring as much as I want. It's all done. So you have here an interesting concept uh, with a smart wiring. You can now start your wiring before you actually are finished with your design to save some time because at the end of the day we know this takes about 30 to 40 percent of your complete manufacturing time when it comes to panel uh, build. So if you can start a little bit earlier that I think is a good thing. So that was the, showing you the feature of updating a project when something was changed or modified. This is how ePlan again helps you to be more efficient. And looking back at this loop here, now we've seen all the different topics one by one. Of course, uh, logistics and testing have not yet been covered, but we'll handle them most likely independently.